الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله الحجة من الحسن في الله الله العالمين واللعن الدائم على الدائمين ودهر الداخلين اللهم كل ولية الحجة من الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى ضائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الله Should we love Imam al-Zaman or should we fear him? I think this is a very important question that we have to ask ourselves and to find the answer. Because this would help us a lot in making friendship and strengthening the bond between us and Imam al-Zaman which is very important. Why it's very important before I reply to this <coughs> question? Because as Shia and its belief, we believe that Imam al-Zaman plays a very important role in religion. He is the awaited not only for us, for, but for all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even our prophet is waiting for him. Our prophet talked about him. Our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in too many narrations mentioned Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. All Islamic sects narrate plenty of narrations. Hundreds, I can say. To be honest, I can say thousands of narrations about Imam Mahdi. So, of course, the narration that's been narrated by both sects, Man Mata Walam Yahr, Imam Zaman, Mata Mitatan, Jahiliya, if somebody dies without knowing the Imam of his era, he would be considered as if he died in the era of pay or in the pagan era, the ignorance era. So should we fear him or love him? Why should we fear him? Because in too many narrations we have that he come with sword, he kills. Some people might be frightened of him. Fry, fear. Some people fear for, for uh, the way that they are used to how they live. Okay, I'm, I'm living, I'm doing what I like. Why do I need Imam Mahdi? I'm studying, I'm working, buying, selling, enjoying my life. You know, I sit and chill with my friends, go out camping, hunting. They like hunting, fishing at least, which of course some might like. I know Shepherdton is not that close to um, sea, but we might have some rivers. Anyway, and etc. So, why do I need Imam al Zaman? Of course, I fear for my life. It's a typical life I'm used to. Probably he will change everything fundamentally. Um, so why shouldn't I fear him? Especially, there is a myth, I can say. I have to label it as a myth. When, when they say, okay, Imam Zaman will come with the sword and kill whoever objects, whoever disagrees with him. Yes, at the end of the day, if I'm a believer, I will accept him as a successor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not now. I need to play. Have you seen when somebody told a young person, do you want to go to Hajj? No, man. I'm still young. What do you mean? I'm not telling you to die. I'm telling you, asking you to go to Hajj. Don't you want to get married? Now, Subhanallah, I'm still young. I'm 24. I'm not telling you to go in prison. <laughs> Sorry? 
Oh, am I? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a golden cage. It's called. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I debunked this myth or, or misconception once. I told somebody to get married. He said, uh, "Well, it's a cage." I told him, "Do you think always staying in a cage is bad? If you live in the jungle, do you think that it's good for you in a jungle with animals in Africa, let's say?" Elephants and, and, and I don't know, tigers, lions. Isn't it safer to live or to sleep at least in the cage? So yes, you are in the cage, but you are safe. You are limited, but you are safe. Unless you're a lion. Sorry? Unless you're a lion. Unless you're a lion, but yeah. Even if you're a lion from another tribe, or pride they call it. You get older. Yes, yes, it's a problematic. It's better for to, to, to sleep safely. Uh, well, anyway, I'm not telling you to, uh, you know, get killed to go to prison. No, no, I'm telling you to protect yourself, protect your religion, protect your dignity, etc. So, because they fear. Imam al-Zaman, because of the myth that exists in their mind, that Imam al-Zaman would come and kill, you know, demolish. He even will demolish mosques and things like that. They have that, uh, I don't know, wrong information. It's not information. It's, it's, I don't know what I call it. It's wrong. That's why they say, okay, we fear even if I say Allahumma kullu waliyik al hujjat al nahsay, no, I don't say it from the bottom of my heart because I fear him, man. As if you, you know, if you've done something wrong in the house and your father is in trip, you fear if he comes back earlier, then you anticipate, then your expectance. Yeah, okay, my dad is, you know. Uh, expediting his uh, ticket to come back tomorrow night. Oh man, what do you mean? No, oh, we have to fix what we did. I made an accident with his car. I need to fix it. To take it to, I don't know, mechanic and etc. No, no, you fear. But if you are ready, Ahlan wa Marhaman, he's welcome. He's my dad and etc. So the problem is, is the lack of information about Imam al-Mahdi that leading us to fear him instead of loving him. While Imam al-Mahdi is a lovable person. He is the person of mercy. Person that represents Almighty God's mercy. And beneficence. Yes. Why scholars, speakers, authors talk about Imam al Zaman from the different angle, which is correct as well, that he will come with sword, he will punish not normal people, he will punish tyrants. Those who kill kids and justify that. Those who demolish cities and justify that. Those who kill millions such as Hitler and justify that. Who burn people alive and justify that. People like Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi who used to burn people, kill innocent kids infant babies and justifies that. He will show no mercy to such people. But not everyone. What about those who are deceived by oppressors? No. The vast majority of people will taste the taste of Imam al-Mahdi's justice and they will love it. And when I say the vast majority, I don't not 
probably 95% of the human beings will love him, will like him, will enjoy his reappearance. What about the other 5%? Of course, always, even in the era of the prophet, there were 5, 6%, 10, 20% of evil people who needed to be punished, imprisoned, sometimes executed. I don't know if someone believes that Hitler should stay alive. I don't think so. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi should stay alive. Abu Mus'ab al-Zarqawi should stay alive. Those who kill people for nothing. As you kill bugs, you know? As you kill bugs, would that irritate you? Would you want to sleep now? Oh man, I killed too many bugs today. No, it's only bugs. If you say that, they, they will tell you, okay, go and see a psychologist. Because you are sick. So, don't put that image of Imam Mahdi in your mind that he will come with sword and kill, you know, it's not a killing mission. And I talked about that. But it's very important that we have to know Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam, understand the real image of Imam Al Mahdi. And if we do so, we will love him more than we fear him. Should we love Allah more or fear Him more? Of course we should love Him more. It's all about love. Should we fear Him? Of course. As well, we should fear Him. But not, we are, not that we are fearing Him for His descriptions. We are fearing Him for our bad actions. That's it. Should we fear Imam Mahdi? Yes. If you commit evil actions, yes, you should fear him. Because of your action, nothing is wrong with Imam Mahdi. It's about your action. We should love Allah more, and we should love Imam Mahdi more, and we should understand the mission of Imam Mahdi. I think we don't know the mission of Imam Mahdi. One of his obligations is to revive all ways of all prophets and messengers of Allah. This is what Imam Rada says in one of his supplications for Imam Zama. Revive by him the ways of all messengers. Mursaleen. How Prophet Joseph used to live with dignity. How Prophet Moses used to live with fear and dignity. How Prophet, I don't know, Ibrahim used to live. Prophet Ibrahim used to live. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us how he tested the Prophet Ibrahim. He told Ibrahim to listen to Sarah, his wife, and to leave Hajar, the mother of Ismail, next to Kaaba. It's a big test to Ibrahim. To Ibrahim is one of, after our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Ibrahim is the greatest Prophet of Allah. And Allah told him, now you have to listen to your wife. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. Even Hajar told him, when she saw Kaaba, you know, it was a desert. She said, oh, Ibrahim, I didn't expect you to leave us here, me and your son, infant baby, Ismail, while you are a prophet of God. And Ibrahim replied then that Allah ordered me to do so. And she said, okay, I submit. That's it. So, you were right. Okay, okay, Islam is not, you know, Islam doesn't respect all religions of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't dignify, doesn't dignify women. Well, we'll go and read the history of Ibrahim. And you're telling me now. 
Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Yes, sometimes Ibrahim should get tested by his wife, Sarah. Sunan al Mursali. Isa and Jesus, how he abandoned dunya and how he respected his mother. He will revive that. He will teach us that. When you look at Imam Mahdi, you will see Jesus, Moses, Ibrahim, Adam, Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, saying, peace be upon them all. You will see all merits of all prophets and messengers and successes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the body of Imam Mahdi. Why should it you love him? You should, you must. But the thing is that you need to know him better. If you understand his mission and know his merits and deepen your insight and knowledge about Imam Mahdi, Wallahi, Tallahi, Billahi, I swear by God, you would love him more. And the love can drag you to the safe island, not the fear. Imam Ali says, there are some people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of fear that the worships of slaves. And some people worship Allah to gain benefit. And that is the worships of what? Merchants, tujjar, and businessmen. And some people worship Allah out of love because they love him. That's why they worship him. And that is the bad for free people. Ahrar. That's the thing. It's your choice. To love him or to fear him. Your choice to love Allah or to fear him. You have to fear him to an extent, but you have to love him more. You have to fear the justice of a man. But you're not if you're not an oppressor, why you should fear him? That's it. Then you have to love him more. And I think that can explain to us a lot. Why Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is not back yet? Because we still lack the information about his mission. We still say, yeah, Abu Saleh should come with his sword and fixes everything. It doesn't work like that. Abu Saleh al Mahdi alayhi salam won't fix everything with his sword. No. He will educate people. Teach people. Yes, he will show no mercy to tyrants. That's it. Enough is enough. He will put a strong end to oppressions. And he will change everything fundamentally. So we're not going to have a pleasure in the era of Imam al Zaman al You might have. If it's halal pleasure. So you mean you're not going to be able to, you know, do whatever we want? Now we cannot do whatever you want. There are rules. Can you speed? Can you drive 300 kilometers per hour between Melbourne and Shepherd? No, you can't. Oh, man. I don't like that limit. So not all, all limits are bad. Because they can, they can save you, save lives. You know? That's important. Why you can't have guns? Because guns can be abused. And here in Australia, you have less crimes. Why? Compared to some other countries uh, that you are allowed in those countries to have guns. Why? Because guns can be lethal as well. Can be fatal as well. 
That's a limitation. Yes, it is. That's good. That's good limit. That's good law. Stop crimes. And etc. So let's reevaluate our thoughts about Imam Mahdi. Let's add some accurate, correct information about Imam Mahdi's mission so we can love him more than we might be able to expedite his reappearance. To hasten his reappearance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's important. You know, we're sitting here in Australia. Yeah. You know, free country, peaceful country, rich country. You know, people are dying of hunger around the globe. People and kids and women are getting bombed around the globe. Innocent people who don't care about politics and any other thing. <clears throat> they don't have any agenda. They just want to live. <clears throat> and no one is giving them the chance to live. So you might say, yes, I'm safe. But the whole world is not about you and me. It's about everyone. So we need a lot of that. We need him. We need him for his justice. We need him for the peace that he will bring to us. We need him for dignity that he will give a human being to experience. We need him because he will give you the right to choose and will not force you to choose anything uh, that he wants. No, no, no. He will give you the right to choose. So we need him more than ever. We need him today. We need him at this moment. If you see the broader picture of what's going around the globe, you will see that the world is so thirsty for the justice of Muhammad. And then you'll understand why you should love Muhammad and not fear him. So it's about love and not fear. Allahumma ala Muhammadin wa ala Oh,